Okay, so this lesson we are going to create a tank thread with using the motion path. And what I have here is I have a tank thread with using the wire deformer method. So I'm going to delete this. I'm not going to delete everything. I'll just delete the geometry. And by the way, if you don't have this, you can simply use a nerve circle to create a tank thread. So just rotate this and just shape this out by using the curve of control vertex and make uh, a tank thread, okay? A shape of a tank thread. So uh, I'll just use this one. You can just easily create one if for your own. And uh, I'll just start from there. And by the way, I'm not going to go through all this function here. You can, if you want to know more about this thing, and lore, which is going to rotate the, the cylinder. You can easily check it out from my previous lesson, which is going to be tank thread wire deformer. And uh, yeah, you can uh, learn more about that. But uh, basically, what I'm going to do for this one is going to be concentrating on uh, motion path. And simply what motion path is, is that uh, what, once you have a geometry of a tank thread, those geometry is going to be connected with the curve what you have and it's going to spin, rotate on top of that curve. That's basically what it is and I'm going to explain how to create that. Okay, so uh, I have already a modeling of a tank thread, so I'll just drag it in here. If you don't have any, then you can just simply use a create a cube for a tank thread. Okay, and I'll just get rid of the namespace here. And what I'm going to do here is you can simply connect this exactly to the y uh, to the curve here, but uh, uh, for later use, I want this to have extra controllers, so. I'm going to create a controller on top of the geometry. So hit this one, North Circle, and group this, Control G, group it, and I'll name this group as a uh, group tank thread. And even I, I'm going to parent my geometry to my controller. So I'll put it in here. So I have this kind of uh, However, I cannot, it's kind of hard to select my controller here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit F9 on my keyboard. Oh, it's going to select everything. Okay, select, why don't we hide my polygon for now? Hide my polygon and then uh, hit F9, select this. Once you select all the CVs, then show the polygons again and shift it, move it up here so that we can uh, easily see, visualize the controller. Okay, so later on we can easily select the controller by because it's going to be on top of the geometry. However, the pivot point is going to be at the center. Okay, so now when I move my controller, it's going to move and rotate my tank thread. Okay, next I need to know how many tank thread I, I have to have on my on my curve here. So simply what you can do is you can simply get the length of this uh, curve and divide it by the length of uh, this tank thread. So first let's get the length of the curve here. Select the curve and change this to a uh, mel and then type A R C L E N and semicolon and hit enter and you're going to get the distance of this uh, the curve okay mine is going to be 60.62 something but I'll just uh, approximately it's going to be around 60 okay I'll just think guess as 60 and how about the length of this uh, tank thread you can easily get that length from uh, using the measure tools, distance tool, and click here to maybe at the end here. I'm not going way far to the end because there are some cross section here. 
uh, when we uh, have the tank train. So it's going to be around uh, approximately around right now it's nine one point nine five, so it's going to be around two. Okay, so uh, sixty divided by two equals thirty. That means that I need thirty of them to uh, cover this uh, this area, the the curve. Okay, by the way, if you think you need more or less, later on you can you can scare them up a little bit like using the scare tool to um, make the distance cover up everything here. Okay, but yeah, uh, we can do that later if you need that. But anyway, it's going to be around 30. So what I have to do here is I have to duplicate this 30 times. And easily what you can do is go here, edit, Duplicate special, go to the option and edit, reset the settings. And I don't want them as a parent, I want them as a word. And number of copy is going to be 29 because it's going to be 30. Uh, yeah, uh, one here, there is one here, so it adds up to be 30 if I put 29 in here. And hit apply. Once you do that, uh, before I do that, undo this, I'll type this tank thread 1. Okay, and then hit apply. So now I have from 1 to 30. Okay, good. You can you can just select one of them and see if they are yeah, moving with the geometries. Okay, good. Once you have that, I want them to be connected with the uh, tank thread here. So how can I connect them? Easily you can go here. Hold down the spacebar, constrain, motion path, attach to motion path, and go to the option. And here, if you it, it just go to the reset settings, and what I'm going to do here is you can just uh, connect them and uh, fix it later if there's something that is uh, wrong, like for example, the directions or anything like that. But I think it is better to correct it now to save a lot of more times and work efficiently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it as start and and right now it's going to be based on the time side. Of it. What it what this means that one to thirty from frame one to frame thirty this is going to be stick to one of the curve here. I mean the curve here. And then uh, from one to frame thirty is going to go all the way around to the same to one cycle on frame 30 okay so uh, instead of setting it something like that I'm going to set this start time to 0 and my end time to 360 the reason why I'm doing this is later on right now it's going to be sticked based on the time slider but later on I want to connect them to the controller here and the controller is going to be based on 0 to 360 to rotate one cycle so that's why I just set it up now. You can set it up later, but it, it might be a lot efficient to work on it like this. Next is going to be uh, the direction of the, the, the modeling. And right now the, the blue indicates Z. So I will set my front axis to Z. And my up axis is going to be the green one, which is going to be the Y. And my vector is going to be the object up. And by the way, I don't have any object up, so I'll create one with my locator. I'll type this locator up and uh, copy that and paste it in all up object and select my first group, shift select my curve, and hit apply. And maybe I need to inverse the up so that it's not going to look here uh, to the locator and hit apply. Once you do that, you can see that uh, the up is facing to the inverse direction of the locator and uh, it's uh, set. So uh, yeah, just repeat this process for each of them. Select the group, shift select the curve and hit apply. You can hit G on your for your last command and go over that and I'll come back after I pause this video and come back after I finish all those things here.